I don't believe in God. I believe in science and I especially don't believe in creation theory. I believe in evolution because it's been scientifically proven. Obviously, that's not what I would say. That's what a lot of people who would argue with me in the videos that I put out, that's what they would say. But I found on X the other day, one of the most compelling arguments from a Christian professor disproving the theory of evolution, because evolution evolution is just a theory. I don't know if you really understood that. It can't be scientifically proven, and he'll talk about it in this video. So I'm going to play this video. I'm going to give some commentary about what he says. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to show you one of the most amazing videos I've seen on the internet of a, a compilation of doctors, of scientists who are saying that they are highly skeptical of Darwinian evolution, and it's uh, it's going to really challenge the the things that you believe and have been taught all through school. But check out what this guy has to say specifically on why we should not take Darwinian evolutionary theory that seriously. For the entire authenticity of the Bible, if you can prove that the Genesis story is false, you have destroyed the entire belief system that on which Christianity is based. So that's why we use this model to show people that Noah's Ark was real and that the story is true. Well, couldn't the story have been symbolic metaphor for other kinds of events that took place? How about creation? Couldn't that have been symbolic or, or metaphorical in, in the language that's there? Well, it, it is possible, but when we look at the uh, four postulates of creation and we compare them with the four postulates of evolution, only the postulates of creation have been observed. Evolution is based on four major ideas. None of them have ever been observed. Number one, that life comes from non-life. We have mm. not one single example of life coming from non-life. Number two, that all the life forms that we have today came from single cell life forms. Many people do not know that while we do have single cell life forms that we call bacteria, we have no two cell life forms, we don't have three cell life forms, we don't have four cell life forms, we don't even have five cell life forms. That is, we go from single cell bacteria to complex life forms. So there's no evidence that all life comes from single cell life forms. That's the, the, the third postulate of evolution is that time and chance drive evolution forward, of course, and time works a... Let me start with this th thing about the, the evolution deal. Because I want to show you, I was just at the Smithsonian uh, Natural History Museum a little while ago. And I want to show you this chart. So what's amazing is we see this chart when in regards to teaching evolution like all the time, right? Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. We see this chart. You know, we see like the, the chimpanzee that becomes this like monkey man, which then eventually becomes a human. And what's interesting to me is like, you know, if natural selection, if the law of natural selection is like that, there's this mutation process that happens that makes one species more advanced than a previous species. And then all of the other ones die off. And then that gene is then passed on to like mutate an entire species over millions of years. What's interesting about this process, and this is what the whole Natural History Museum evolution exhibit kind of teaches, is you have this over here, the monkey, and then you have man over here, and then there's all of this process that happens in between. Yet today, we still have this species, and we still have this species, but we don't have any of the species in between. So if this species was the least dominant species genetically, and then it became more genetically advanced. How come we only have the beginning and the end? We don't have anything today that still exists. If anything, I would imagine that none of these would exist, yet we still have the first one. It's kind of a similar point that my man's making about the single cell bacteria. The, the, the third postulate of evolution is that time and chance drive evolution forward, of course, and time works against evolution. The chance of one simple 100 unit protein coming together by accident is, this is a very big number. It's time and chance make evolution absolutely impossible. The fourth posture. I think that's just common sense personally. Like if you were to put all of your clothes in a, in a drying machine, right? And you were looking to run that dry cycle 
until all of those clothes came out of that dryer and they were neatly folded. The, the idea is that somehow this random combination of spins is going to make all of these clothes eventually come out perfectly folded. Like to me, that would be an easier task than for all of these genetic code to like eventually become something more complex than they were before. I would imagine that it would be mathematically impossible, statistically impossible to run that machine enough times to produce one pile of folded laundry, much less an entire ecosystem of evolved species that are, are way, way different than how they originally came out. I, I don't, I'm not a scientist, but for me, it just uh, it doesn't make sense. That evolution is based on is that um, what we see today Minor genetic variation in species is evidence of macroevolution. So because cats are different colors, dogs are different sizes, that means that fish turned into cows. And of course, we know that that's not true because uh, Mendel proved that all the genes that exist today, you can shuffle them around, but there are no new genes that created, were created. Let's, let's think about the four major postulates of creation. Number one, where there's a design, there must be a designer. We see codes in DNA. Codes are evidence That's of crazy. intelligence because you have to translate from one language to another. We have not a single example of that happening by accident. Number two, that the Earth, the solar system, the universe, and the galaxy are young, measured in thousands of years, not millions or billions of years. Many times people ask me, they say, well, Major, you believe in a young Earth, a 6,000-year Earth. Can you show me that that's true without using the Bible? And I say, absolutely. What's the oldest living thing on the planet? The oldest living thing on the planet? Trees. How old are the oldest trees? 4,500 years. That takes us back almost exactly to the year of the flood. Okay, in 2,500 B.C. Number two, I'm saying, look at the sky. Uh, uh, we call solar nebulae. A solar nebula is uh, what we see from a supernova when a star explodes. It leaves a gas cloud. Because of our radio telescopes that we have now today, we can look deep into space and we can actually count the number of solar nebulae that are there. And how many are there? A supernova a, 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 takes place about once every 26 years. How many solar nebulae do we have? 6,000 years worth. That's impossible in a universe that is billions and billions of years old. Yo, I, first of all, again, I know, I know the word of God. I know God. And I know how to create content. I'm not a scientist. So if you have, if you got to refute this, I'm, I'm open to you refuting it in the comments. Please be kind. Like I'm willing to be kind with you. So be cordial, but this is a really interesting discussion. And what I love about this is that some people think that if you're going to believe the Bible, that all of a sudden you don't believe that science has any merit. But when you really believe that God is the creator of all things, science doesn't scare you. Because science is the observation of the natural world. And if God created all things, all things are going to point to him being the creator anyway. That's what it says in the book of Romans. All of creation points to the reality of God and his existence. And so I love that my man is using real scientific technology to make a point of like, this all of this testifies to who God is and to the nature of he created the world this the way that he said that he created the world. It's like it's not a secret. So anyway, pretty interesting. And we have other evidences such as alpha decay that we do in our program that most people don't understand that also shows that the earth is 6000 years old. So that's the second postulate proves that the biblical story of creation is true. Life that we see today are the basic kinds of animals and plant life that were originally created. So we can test that. You can breed dogs, you can breed cats, but you can't breed cats with dogs. So there are limits to how far we can go. That's and true. lastly, that is, Earth experienced a worldwide flood in approximately 2500 BC, 1656 years after the world was created. The world is filled with limestone. Limestone is sedimentary rock. It precipitates out of water. The entire earth was filled with water. Every mountain chain in the world, including Everest, has sea life on top of that mountain. The mountains rose out of the water. Whoa, whoa, so whoa, whoa. Did my man just say that even Mount Everest has sea life on top of the mountain? 
Think about it. If the story of Noah is true, if God flooded the whole earth, as the Bible preaches and teaches, then that would be true, right? If every square inch of planet earth, even Mount Everest, was covered in water, then there would be sea life at the top of Mount Everest. I, I haven't seen that personally. If that's true, though, it's, that, is, that is so crazy. Sea life on top of that mountain. The mountains rose out of the water, so we know that there was a worldwide flood. Let me, let me pose a question to you, and Mark and Lise, feel free to jump in in this. And that is this. Most people who don't believe in God aren't card-carrying members of the Atheist Club. They haven't studied molecular biology. Yes. Why don't they believe in God? What is the struggle there? Um, Neil, I'm going to tell you, that's a very good question. My answer to that is probably because most of them has not actually seen the evidence that supports the Bible. Mm, interesting. And that is my job to actually show them. You're right. Most people are somewhere drifting somewhere in the middle. This is a war for ideas. And it's my job. It's my job to combat these forces of error particularly in secular campuses and in universities, which is where I work and teach and show that the evidence supports God's word. God is a God of science. Oh, my goodness. My bed is preaching. And this is why I am so ah, I'm so passionate, man, about men and women being led by the Holy Spirit and occupying these areas of our culture, business, athletics, entertainment education, science, medicine. We need people who are willing to champion the kingdom of God, the word of God, and bring the kingdom into those places so that people can be set free because God's not afraid of any of that stuff, man. God's truth wins out over everything. And uh, man, I'm just fired up. This is this guy's, I don't even know who this guy is, but he's a G and uh, I want to meet him someday. Here's the video that I wanted to share with you about this guy is not like some guy on an island. More and more scientists are becoming aware and are starting to doubt things and become skeptical of things that have just kind of been jammed jammed into us all through grade school, all through college, all through graduate school. And now you're having people who are really well-educated, not fringe people. You're having people all over the planet say, you know what? I think it's time that we stop referring to this this theory as a, as a law and straight up fact. And here's here's the clip I want to show you. I'm skeptical of the claim. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. We are skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for the complexity of life careful examination of, of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. Over a thousand PhD scientists worldwide have signed the list. I'm skeptical. Skeptical. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical of claims for the ability for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for, for the, the complexity. Complexity. The complexity. The complexity. To account for the complexity of life. Careful examination. 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 Of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. It says, oh, I can't. I wish these things got out of the way. A scientific, what does it say? A the scientific descent from Darwinianism. Why does this matter so much? Like, you know what? The Bible talks about not getting into like foolish arguments and and to be quarrelsome. And I, I'm not really a quarrelsome person. At least I don't think I am. But what I am passionate about is the is the Word of God. Because this thing, this Bible, this book, the Word that was inspired by God, written through man, has the power to change your life, has the power to save your soul, has the power to prosper you and give you a hope and a future. And unfortunately, too many people have discounted the reality of God and have really made science their God 
when all science actually testifies that there is an intelligent designer who made you. You need to know this. God created you with a purpose. You are not the sum collection of a random, uh, a random lab experiment that happened by accident where you don't have inherent value. You don't have a soul. You don't have a purpose. Let me tell you this. Darwinian evolution is the cruelest way of looking at humanity. If you believe in Darwinian evolution, there's no purpose for morality. Where would morality even come from? Where would the dignity of human life even come from? If you believe in Darwinian evolution, what you believe is survival of the fittest. If, you, uh, if you're if you the most advanced, you have the right to live and other, other people don't have the right to live. It's demonic. The Bible says that God created man and woman in his own image. You need to know that you have inherent value. Doesn't matter what race you come from. Doesn't matter what gender. Doesn't matter if you were born with some sort of physical infirmity. God sees you and dignifies your life. Jesus looks at your life and says, you were worth creating and you were even worth dying for. A Darwinian evolutionary mindset or philosophy on the universe is cruel is cold and it leaves you empty and ultimately if you want the truth believing in that and not believing in what and what god's word says will take you down a path of destruction separation from god forever with weeping and gnashing of teeth in hell but because god loves you because god created you in his image because god has a purpose for you he paved the way for you to have eternal life and that only comes through the finished work of jesus on the cross and faith in him and faith in the resurrection that god is not dead that god doesn't just set you and like lets you die and then drift off into it an eternity of darkness no god actually wants to give you eternal life he wants to take away your pain. He wants to take away suffering. And he wants you to dwell with him forever in heaven. This, this is the narrative that's true. Not this junk. Not the junk of, you know, you're you're just a random uh, evolution of goop that became like just a person. No, you have inherent dignity. And God paid a high price by sending his son Jesus on the cross to restore your dignity. That's why this conversation matters. Would love to hear your thoughts, though. Let me know in the comments. This is coming from a pastor, Pastor Cap. Glad you guys are here. If you enjoyed this video, I would encourage you guys to subscribe. And if you're interested, if you're in this place where, like, I want to know what's going to happen to me when I die, I want to know if I am in right standing with this God who intended me, who designed me, who created me and knit me in my mother's womb. I want you to watch another video that I did on this channel. It's going to tell you exactly what's going to happen to you when you die, whether you're going to go to heaven or hell. Be certain that you will spend eternity in heaven with him. Go check that out. Subscribe for more. I'll see you guys in the next video.